Okay, um, as they're passing the baskets, I just wanted to remind you of something. There's uh, passages in Scripture that talk about the creation of God and the majesty of that creation. There is a certain figure um, that uh, was stated uh, by the divine script to be the most majestic creation of God. And his name was Lucifer, the bright and shining one. But if you read through the passages that deal with this amazing creation, um, you'll, you'll find two things that come out. One of them is, um, is uh, described by the ancient Jews about the nature of his creation that Lucifer was made as a prismatic being. How many remember in school looking at a prism and being amazed at what a prism does? Because light has everything in it. God is light, light is God. Um, that's the definition of God from Scripture. But, but uh, just looking at a beam of light, you, you can't see all the beauty in it. But when it hits a prism, all of the beauty of the rainbow, and the uh, multifaceted, colors and everything uh, come out. And if you're not careful, you'll think that the prism is the big event, but it isn't. The prism is just built in a way that it, um, it advertises the beauty of the light and it effervesces the beauty of the light. So uh, that's why Lucifer was called the cherub that covered the throne and he was created to effervesce the glory of God throughout the universe. Of course, he was puffed up in pride, and he got to thinking it was all about him instead of realizing he was just a prism. It was actually all about the light. Um, and so uh, he was puffed up in pride and cast down, and um, cast down from his splendor. But remember that, uh, not only was he to effervesce the glory and majesty of God throughout creation, but music was originally created in him. Um, he, he was the cosmic worship leader. And so we see that this great and majestic being um, was given two charges. Effervesce the glory of God and return praise back to the God of glory. And when, when he was cast out, you notice that nobody was promoted to take his place. Gabriel and Ariel and Michael, no, nobody was promoted to take his place because that place is reserved for us. We are the ones that are being raised up to effervesce the glory of God and to return him, him uh, praise. And those two things are intricately uh, connected. The more you worship God, the more you manifest his glory to those around you. And so today uh, we have Leonard Jones here. We're honored to have Leonard Jones here. Uh, and, yeah, and... I want to encourage you to just come to the front, find a place, and just block out everything else, and just let's worship the Lord, right? That's what we were created to do. All right, Leonard, take it away, buddy.
lift up your name, oh Jesus. We glorify your name, Jesus. We love your name, oh God, above all other names. We love your heart, God, above all other hearts.
Lord, we release just the angels to come in here, healing angels, angels of truth, angels that can tear down strongholds, Lord, that can use our words and bind and loose. I, I just bind any curses over this place in Jesus' name, because the Bible says that curses will, they won't alight, causeless, they will not alight. There's no cause, any curse will just go right over. And we just release blessing into this room. And we just say that, God, that you are over us. You are over us. We submit to your spirit this morning, God. I am mighty, and he is mine. His banner over me is love. I am my beloved's, and he is mine. His banner over me is love. I am my beloved's, and he is mine. His banner over me. I am my beloved's and he is mine. His banner over me is love. I am my beloved's and he is mine. His banner over me is love. I am my beloved's and he is mine. His It's mine, it's banner over me is alive. I am my beloved son. It's mine, it's banner over me is alive. One thing you'll find out about me is I'm really different. I'm sorry about that, but I am, I and mean, I can't do what everybody else does and so this is um when i got saved back in 1970 71 and i, and I went to the church and i heard the music that was going on i went i don't know if i can do this lord i i just don't want to do this i'm sorry and uh i really thought i would never do worship in my whole life and i've been doing worship for over 50 years now <laughs> But I do sound a little bit different. <laughs> so here we go. We're going to, this is a fairly new song. Oh, oh, oh. 
sing out. He brought me to his banqueting table. He brought me to his banqueting table. Come on. He brought me to his banqueting table. And his
worth it all, Lord. You're worthy of all blessing. You're worthy of all honor.
So over and over, forever I'll sing. Yes, the Lord, yes, the Lord, hallelujah. Yes, the Lord, yes, the Lord. Rise up my soul, rise up my soul, and bless the Lord with all my heart. You've made me whole, Lord. We bless your name, we bless your name.
the prophet was saying that there are more that are be that are for us than that are against us. But a lot of times we we look at all the stuff that's going on, and he told his servant to go up and 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 look, and he saw a little a cloud as a little cloud coming. And that's when he knew the rain is coming. And I don't, I don't know about you, but I know, man, the, the rain is coming on our land right now. It's getting ready to fall. And uh, I'm, ex I'm super excited about the future. It's like, I am not excited about the past because my past was kind of crappy. I don't know about yours. <laughs> uh, but my future is bright. And it, it doesn't, uh, doesn't matter. Age is just a number. It doesn't matter how old you are. So even though, uh, I mean, our body's going to give out someday. Um, so what? Our spirit is just getting, you know, even though our, the Bible says our outward man perish, our inward man is renewed day by day. So every day your, your inward man can actually get stronger and stronger and stronger you don't have to i mean and of course you want to do everything you you can to keep your body healthy eat right exercise uh love your wife stay married to the same woman <laughs> i've been married uh i guess you guys have been married 45 years 44 i've been married 41 years and uh we had plenty of reason to divorce in, in, throughout those 41 years. But we made a decision before we even said I do on, this, on the stage at our church. We made a decision. We are not going to divorce no matter. I don't care what happens. We're not leaving each other. And so many people just give up. And I'm not heaping condemnation. I'm just saying you have to make a decision to go forth. You have to make a decision. Are you going to walk with God the rest of your life? Or are you going to walk until it gets really, really rough? People have lost their children. People have lost their mates. People have lost limbs. And yet God is faithful. And I, I was just up in Reading, and, and one of the things that Bill Johnson said it, on as soon as his wife took her last breath, his hands went up. And he just started worshiping God. You know, because God is above us. He's actually, as you know, I'm sure, he, he's higher than death. <laughs> death has lost its sting. We don't have that. There's no sting in death anymore. And uh, so, you know, we're not to, like, we're not supposed to be like the heathen who constantly afraid of dying. That is not, that is graduation, man. And so we're, we're I'm just ready to go for God, stronger now. Uh, I figure I should be able to outplay all these young guys for another 10 years. <laughs> That's my, my goal is to be able to do more push-ups than them when I'm 82, <laughs> to be able to play faster and think clearer than they do. Why not? Why not? Didn't it say that Moses' eye did not dim and his strength was not abated? And I, I'm, I'm believing that for myself. I'm believing that God is going to strengthen me. He's going to give me I mean, I'm telling you, I get so many things, that, like probably every one of you, I get so many things wrong with my body. And um, I'm, a, I'm a veteran, so I go to the VA clinic, and, they, and I say, yeah, I've, I've got this thing on my chest here, this scab, it's just formed. And she said, well, we need to biopsy that, and it'll come back in. And, well, before they got to the biopsy, I got prayed for. <laughs> and uh, so I come back, and she said, okay, let's look. Look at the thing. Well, it's gone. <laughs> she goes, what? I said, yeah. I, I, I went to church. They prayed for it. It's gone. 
I mean, one thing after the other like that. One thing after the other. I'll go, I'll, I'll, I'll I mean, it's not, it's not unwise to go to the doctor if you see something. It's, it's fine. So I'd go to, go to him and, and um, this last time I went and she said, my God, your cholesterol level is just off the charts. Of course, that's that cholesterol thing. That's just a big lie anyway. Uh, and um, so I said, well, I'll just, I'll just eat different. And my cholesterol level is fine now. I, I just changed my diet. I, and uh, so we need to take care of this temple. We really do need to take care of this temple. But uh, what's inside the temple is a lot more important than the temple. Like that, that last song I sang before where it says, uh, we're just the setting. You're the stone. Now, settings are very, very valuable. I mean, gosh, the setting for my wife's ring cost us, I think, like $700 or something like that for our, our rings. But the diamond that somebody gave us was worth about $3,000. You're very valuable. You are a very valuable person. But I'll tell you what, when the stone gets set in the setting, man, there's something that happens in your life that just can't happen any other way. There's no philosophy. There's no other God that can change you the way Jesus can. I know that because I've been changed just like you guys have been changed. And um, I think we're going to do one more song, if it's okay with you. So this is a song I wrote about uh, about 73 years ago. No, 70, 23 years ago. I'm 73. Uh, and uh, on my 50th birthday, I don't know what I was thinking. My son, I gave him a, a skateboard for Christmas. And we're, he's getting, he's going down the driveway. And I thought, I used to skateboard. And, uh, <laughs> and so I, I said, hey, let me get on there. So I got on there, and I was starting to do little things that I used to be able to do, and uh, nothing like what the kids can do now, absolutely nothing. And uh, I'm just going along, and it was in a, on a driveway, and it had a little crack in the driveway, and as soon as I hit that crack, that skateboard stopped, and I didn't. And I went down, and I broke my wrist. And... Uh, and so I'm recuperating at the beach, and I have a cast on, <laughs> but I still, I still can get to my fingers, so I got me a guitar pick. And uh, so I, I wrote this song while I was recuperating. <laughs> Songwriters are their worst critics. And so after I wrote the song, uh, I tried it out for church. And it's so different than any songs that they were. I guess you can figure out I am different musically. <laughs> then every, and so the people just didn't, they were like a cow with, or a deer with headlights. Like, what is that? And I thought, well, well that song's just no good. And, and then some, time, some point later, uh, I, I was playing it, and somebody said, oh, you should do that tonight. So I did it, and, it, and the, the Holy Spirit came in. And, and then I, uh, so the name of the song was called Jesus. And uh, I asked the Lord about it. I said, do you like people to sing your name? And he doesn't usually talk to me, but if, I can usually tell if it's the Lord because it's a real quick answer. And he went, oh, yeah. And, uh, and, I, and I thought, I, I actually wouldn't like people to sing my name to me. <laughs> uh, Leonard, Leonard. You know. It was just like, ugh. <laughs> and, uh, and the Lord said, well, you're not like me. So he, he, he does not have an elevated opinion of himself. He, matter of fact, he can't have an elevated opinion of himself because he is called the most high. And, uh, and so, and then all of a sudden I came to this conclusion one time, I was doing this song 
And I, I like to close my eyes a lot of times when I'm worshiping. And I could see Jesus like pulling up his, 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 uh, the hem of his garment and just dancing, just kicking up a storm. And I went, okay, I'm, I, I think I actually like this song. So this is a very old song. And the, uh, the chorus is, Jesus, Jesus, hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus, hallelujah. It's not too hard, right? Jesus, Jesus, hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus, hallelujah. And I think it we
man of God. Everything but you doesn't matter. You're the only one. And we lift your name up, God. Oh, we lift your name up high. Oh, we lift your name above all other names. Oh, Jesus. Oh, adore him for a little while, a little moment longer. Let's just adore him a little while, oh God, God of us. We want to see your face, we want to know your ways, we want to feel your touch, oh God, and give it away. We want to help this world to know you, God. First, we must know you better ourselves. Oh, Jesus, 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 oh, Jesus. our lives around that name, Lord. Oh, we build our hearts around that name. We surround you with our praise. You can't get away, Lord. You can't get away from our praise as we have got you surrounded today. Stay a while and break your bread with us, Lord. Oh, stay a while and drink your wine. 
Oh, stay a while and oh, we want you to rest. We want you to rest. Here is a place you can lay your head, Lord. Lay your head down, oh Lord. Lay your head down, oh Lord. Right here. Here is a place where you can rest. Here is a place where your throne can be clearly seen, Lord. Lay your head down upon this ground. Lay your head down on us, O oh God. I know we are just dust We're your body, Lord But we've been missing the head But it's coming back It's coming back to the church And everyone in the church will know Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Glorify your name. We glorify your name, O oh God. Let your glory glory glorify your name inside of us let your glory your glory cause you're the glory and the lifter of our heads you're the glory the glory the glory and the lifter of my head. You're the glory, the glory. You're the glory and the lifter of my our praise we lift our hearts oh lord we need a change and change comes from you oh god we want to be more like you more like you like the four living creatures we want to sing holy holy think about the uh, those four living creatures it says day and night they just cry holy and holy and holy and um, the Lord either the Lord or my brain said they never repeat themselves because every time they say holy it's a response to what they're seeing and there's no other word than that they're looking and can you imagine looking on the the creator who created every star 
every planet, every galaxy. And we don't even, we can't even, our telescopes can't even reach that far. And, and there he is amongst men. <laughs> he came amongst men. What, what a deal, I'm telling you. He's amazing. He really is amazing. Um, he is, I don't know about you, but Jesus to me is so hilariously funny. I mean, he's walking along the road after he's resurrected and these two guys are walking along and he knows what they're talking about. And he goes, what y'all talking about? <laughs> and they said, this guy, you don't know, everybody should know what happened. This Jesus guy got crucified. And uh, so after he talked for a while, he just kept walking. They said, hey, come come here and, and, and break bread with us. And uh, so he's, he breaks bread, disappears. The next thing he shows up in the upper upper room. I guess it's the upper room. I'm not quite sure where they're at. And he shows up right in the midst of them. And he shows him his hands and feet, which to me are the most important things of, ever. And then he goes, do you guys have anything to eat? <laughs> I mean, like, he's hungry. And uh, it just kind of it's just funny to me that he that that's in the Bible that he asked for something to eat and, and you have to realize Jesus was a real man that's why he was sitting at, at the well when the lady came up when the uh, when the Samaritan lady came up and uh, it says in the Bible that he he was tired from the journey he was just tired he said man just go find some food and and then this lady comes, and um, isn't it funny to me that he hardly ever reveals himself to anybody, but he reveals himself to this lady as the Messiah. And here this lady is living with a guy <laughs> and a Samaritan. And to me, it's like, man, I'm... I've read the Bible over 55 years now. I just studied it and studied it, and I still look at it, and I marvel how real the Gospels are, how real and how how fortunate we are to have that written down rendition of what Jesus did on the earth. And um, but the Bible also says that if, if everything that he had done had been written, not the earth actually couldn't contain the books. Uh, and I don't think that's talking about during his lifetime on earth. I'm talking about everything that he's done because Jesus, it says, everything was made by and through him. God used his son to make everything. It's so crazy. Um, and I don't know. I just love to sit down and just talk to the Lord. And sometimes he talks back, but most of the time he doesn't. It's just, uh, but I always make a place to just sit there. I know, I don't know, but I, I, I sit there and I'm drinking coffee a lot of times. And sometimes I'll just, just shut up and listen. And every once in a while, he'll just say something to me. And almost always it's funny. It's like, and I know it's not me because I would never think the things that he's, he says to me. And just make a time in your life to listen. Yeah, when you're, you know, you say, well, I got to go pray. Well, I think half of that prayer time should be listening. You shouldn't be always talking. Uh, I, when I'm going, when I'm talking to somebody and they never shut up for me to say something, it kind of bugs me. And, and I think Jesus is the same way. It's like, if you'll shut up, I'll talk. So, uh, yeah, pray. Say things to God, but then listen. See what he says. It's an interesting thing is that God's voice sounds to you just like your voice. So you think, well, I made that up. No, there's, there's a little bit of a difference because usually when God talks to you, it's not something that you would think. So take take this time because I mean our, our, we're on this earth just for like a, a, a second basically so take time and get to know God because that 
the way you get to know God here, you cannot get to know God in heaven. Because when you see him, it says uh, you're going to be like him. Uh, but guess what? You can actually start seeing him here. And the more you see him, you can be like him here. And I can't overemphasize the way you see him. There's, there's two basic things in my life. There's three basic things. The way I see God. And the very first thing, actually, is the Bible. I see him in the Bible. I see him in nature. And then I see his acts, what he's doing in the earth. And it, it, it really gives you like a steadfast, something to hold on to. Because the earth, it just, it's constantly shaking. But God's kingdom will not be shaken. So you attach yourself to God's kingdom. Whenever you worship, like, like we did this morning, when you worship this, this whole, this ground actually belongs to the kingdom of God. It doesn't belong to California doesn't belong to the United States. This ground right here actually is the kingdom of God because whoever you give your allegiance to, you become their subject. We've given our allegiance, our, our allegiance to Jesus, and so he is our king. If he's our king, then this is his kingdom. This stage is his kingdom. And uh, will you worship God in your house? That becomes part of the kingdom of God. You go into Publix or what, I know, Safeway or whatever kind of stores you have around here, and you worship God, you bring the kingdom. When you worship God, you bring the kingdom in. And I guess, uh, I don't know, I could go on and on and on, but I'm, I, 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 my feet are hurting. <laughs> so thank God. I really appreciate y'all having me. It's It's been a blast. I love it. I one of the, like I, I can't I think it was Nathaniel where when when they brought Nathaniel to Jesus he went uh, basically when he looked at he went he went now there and there in this guy there is no guile and uh, to me that's like I don't know want to be crude but he's saying like there's no BS in this guy he is for the kingdom. And I felt like the Lord said for you that there's no guile in you. And you're really, he loves your realness. I, and I love that. I don't know you that well, but there's a realness about you that I really like. And God really likes it too. So. Thank you, Leonard. Listen, I, um, I want to do something that God really impressed me during worship that's important to do before we go. And um, so that has to do with the blessing. And um, as I think we all know, uh, God used Litter Jones and just a few other people um, years ago to, to birth um, a move of God that impacted the world. And that's the morning star, uh, all the worship that's come out of there and all the prophetic um, teaching and impetus that's come out of there. And uh, so you remember that Pharaoh, uh, in the days of Joseph, Pharaoh really wanted to meet Jacob. And the reason he wanted to meet Jacob is because he was so impressed with his offspring. Uh, he thought, whoever was the dad of this boy, Joseph, I, I want to meet him. And um, so it's, it's just really an honor to have Leonard Jones here. And, um, and I believe what Leonard said, I think he was speaking prophetically, but the path of the just shines brighter and brighter and brighter to full perfection. And so, um, so we say amen to that, Leonard. You're not look, looking over your shoulder at great things that once happened, but all that was a warm up for what's about to happen. I believe that. And uh, so um, I want us to pray over Leonard that today but before we do that Leonard I wanted to ask you if you would just come up and stand here and uh, I want you to pronounce a prophetic blessing over the worship of this house and let me just say this we have a lot of wonderful things happening here but 
the vision that's been in Cheryl and I's heart and just burns in our hearts are times like this where in the presence of God, people are just spontaneously healed. They're spontaneously delivered. They, they come to salvation. It's just the flowing of the river of God. And, um, and so praise and worship is the atmosphere of eternity. It's the atmosphere of heaven. And we're trying to bring heaven to earth. And so I, I really feel like over uh, the last uh, 38 years, you know, we've, we've learned to fight. We've had a lot of uh, spiritual warfare um, o- over a lot of things. But the spiritual warfare that has come against us in regard to praise and worship is, is very, very significant. And, and we've had some wonderful times of praise and worship around here. But I, I don't think we've ever broke through into what God wants to release through this house. And I felt like that uh, it was the, the will and purpose of God for Leonard to uh, pray over the musicians. So I'd like, Dwayne, I'd like you to come and stand right in front of Leonard and, and Bailey and Joe. Come and stand on either side of Dwayne. I want everybody to stand up. I want everybody... Uh, let, let's put Leonard right here on the flat, and then uh, you, you three guys um, right here, Dwayne, I want you to stand right in front of Leonard so he can put his hand on your shoulders. You other guys, I'll come alongside him, and then in, in front of them, everybody that is actively involved in the worship team right now and the sound, come and stand in front of them, and then... Um, then I'd like everybody that prophetically feels like uh, they are supposed to be a part of praise and worship around here uh, to to come around. And I I just want us to receive uh, from Leonard Jones a prophetic blessing. Did you know that the blessing is is so profound? And it's, it's one of the things that God promised his priest. He said, I will give you the authority to bless in my name. And wherever, wherever you pronounce my blessing, it will remain. Get in front of them here, right here. It's worshipers, right here, right in front of these guys, right? And I, I want Leonard to lay his hands on them. I want them to lay their hands on you. I want us uh, this morning to receive. Get, get up here. No, no spectators, just get up here, Okay. <laughs> And then I, I want the, all the prophetic intercessors to gather around. Everybody else that wants to just come and surround this group. And uh, I believe in the blessing. It's so profound that when Jacob um, accidentally blessed the wrong kid, this is in the Bible. Mm-hmm. And when he found out about it, he said, oops, sorry. Uh, I pronounced a blessing and my blessing will remain. It's, it's profound. Uh, and in the West here, we don't understand the power of a blessing, but it's really, really profound. And I can't think of a, a better person to ask to just pray prophetically over the future of this church as it re, re, uh, regards uh, prophetic praise and worship, which I think is the key for the river of God flowing in this place. So everybody else, extend your hands toward them. Uh, if you want to uh, join, just come on up here because this is a family deal. But um, uh, Leonard, would you pray a blessing? Amen. Father, I, I realize that music is not worship. Worship is heart. Mm-hmm. And uh, I don't pray so much music on these guys. I pray worship. I pray worship to come out of their hearts, Lord. And because of that, that they will want to actually spend time with you, God, away from their phones, away from the television, just with you. Um, If they don't sing, if they don't play, it doesn't matter. They can worship you. It can come out of their heart, God. It can come out of their lives like waves. And on the way to blessing you, they get cleansed from yeah. the from the waves. So I'm just asking you, God, for waves and waves of worship yes, to come out of these men, Lord, and out of all the people that stand here right now, God. Yes, Lord Jesus. 
and just it's I can't overemphasize it takes time you have to spend time with God you have to it's don't just throw a, a a word up once in a while, but really sit down like you're sitting down for a dinner with your spouse, like an anniversary dinner. It's not supposed to be, hey, let's get the meat here. It's supposed to be looking into the eyes of your spouse, and it's supposed to say what they mean to you. Lord, help them to say what they mean to you. Let them mean what they say. No empty words, no empty notes out of their instruments. Yes, please. Lord, we, this is a, a, a serious thing because your kingdom can actually come here and actually change this whole city yes, just because yes. of this little piece of the kingdom of yes. God right here. Yes, Lord. And like I prayed the other night, Lord, I released, I released the dance. Yes. I release all art i release uh pottery i release internet just things that they can do on the internet to to glorify you in this place lord we we don't look back we look forward and and i just bless this house i bless this house with with uh, revelation Revelation of who you are, that they're not blindly worshiping somebody in outer space, but actually worshiping the true and living God. Revelation of who you are and how worthy you are to be praised, how worthy you are to to worship, how worthy you are to bow down to God. Revelation and and just open, open heavens over this place. Open heavens. Lord, as they pray, and I know they pray on earth as it is in heaven here, God. Like, this is like, we want heaven to actually go, wow, we want some of earth. <laughs> we want it to be so good here that heaven looks down and goes, man, I just want to visit there for a while. Because that's, that's just amazing what's happening right there. That's what we want for this fellowship, God. We want the angels to be a little bit jealous of the worship that is going on here in this house. Oh, God. And we just draw upon upon your, uh, gosh, I keep hearing these words in my spirit, and I don't even know how to pronounce them. It's, God, there's God, there's, there are new languages coming. Yes, Lord Jesus. That, that for you guys. So it's gonna be, there's gonna be new tongues released that you're going, you know, we're not, we're not doing the shanda, shanda, shanda. I mean, you know, we, new real languages are coming. Real heavenly languages are coming. And you're to sing in those languages. Because something will be released. Uh, it says in the Bible that uh, when you, when person, if he prays in tongues, he's speaking mysteries. Well, if you're singing in tongues, you're singing mysteries. So I release those new tongues right now. I release them in all the singers. I, I release different ideas in the musicians that they've never had before. And uh, just a fresh, a new, the, the lid, the witchcraft, all that stuff is broken. Yes. It's broken. Yes. We can go much, much higher. You're gonna, you guys, you musicians, you're going to notice a difference. You're going to notice where you were making mistakes. All of a sudden, you're not making those mistakes musically. Where your voice was giving out, all of a sudden, your voice is going to get stronger. Where you couldn't reach the next high, the, the next note up, you're going to be able to reach that next note. And uh, and I just I, I release just a love of of your presence, God. Yeah. And help, help all, particularly the musicians and singers, help them to learn how to worship in their practices. In, in their practices at home. Learn how to, to actually take um, and bring their scales, their arpeggios, their, the pieces that they're learning, and worship you with them. 
But you guys are going to see, when you do that, you're going to see such a difference. When I turned my practice into worship, I saw a huge difference. But I still noticed that there was, I still had some roadblocks until uh, the day after the election, they were gone. All of a sudden, I could do things I couldn't do before. I literally couldn't, and I've been playing a long time. <laughs> I all of a sudden could do things that I couldn't do. So I believe that that open heavens, it's not just for me, it's for you too. And there's no lid. There's no lid whatsoever here. Um, that doesn't mean that you guys shouldn't practice. What that means is you should worship God with your practice. Yes. And when you do like, like I've been doing, you're going to see a big difference. Yes. Uh, you're going to see where it took you 50 times through a piece. You can learn it in two or three times Beautiful. through the piece. Beautiful. Um, I, and uh, I'm just releasing new songs. Yes. I'm, I'm yes. releasing songs from this church. Yes. Songs that are written in this church for this fellowship, for this city, for this state, in this fellowship right now. New songs. I'm, I'm releasing platforms and yes. um, you, places of that that they can be released, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Just everybody, if you would, stay right where you're at, and everybody turn right around and face Leonard, and we're going to bless him. Yeah, okay, just extend your hands toward him. Father, we thank you for Leonard Jones. We thank you for a lifetime of serving you. We thank you, Lord, that in the, the times that were the darkest and the toughest, uh, he stood strong, uh, having done everything he knew to do. And, Lord, he always ran back into your arms. We thank you for that. We thank you for a whole lifetime, Lord Jesus, of serving you and blessing your people. And we know, Lord, that the path of the just is like a light that shines brighter and brighter and brighter unto full perfection. We thank you for all the amazing things that Leonard Jones has done. But we know that the full perfection is, is just ahead. And we pray for open heavens in Jesus' name, just as he felt uh, something uh, lift off, something break off, to give him new freedom. Just recently, we pray that it would continue to happen more and more. We pray, Lord, for uh, celestial music to pour out of the heavens into his heart. We pray, oh God, for your blessing over him as he is investing what he's, he's learned from you into, uh, into scores of other young musicians. We pray for great, great grace. And Lord, let the there come greater uh, revelations in Jesus' name. We pray that uh, in his times alone with you, heaven will open to him, that his eyes, Lord Jesus, will see things that he's longed to see, that his heart will experience, the Lord, the, the uh, communion and a union with you that he has forever longed for. We pray your blessing and your grace over him in Jesus' name. And God, we thank you that he is going to be one that leads many young people into a union with you and into a Brother Lawrence-like relationship, into a practice of the presence of God rather than just a practice, but a practice of the presence of God. And God, I thank you that you're on him at this season of his life for good, and you have much, much more for him to accomplish. And we pray for his body, that it would line up with heaven, that it would begin to to, yes, that it would begin to walk out that resurrection life, God. God, that every ounce of his being would be filled with your glory, God. God, we thank you for the deposit that he has brought and left here. And we just bless him and we just say abundantly bless his provision. Let this be a season that you abundantly bless his provision and let many, many, many young people begin and even people his own age, his peers, begin to learn to live in your presence and act out of that exceedingly abundantly great life that you've given to him. In Jesus' name, amen.